What's up guys, today we're going to be talking about the HP Pavilion gaming laptop. This one is the 15T. Now when I first saw this thing, I thought it was cool that someone was offering a GTX 1660 Ti laptop for just $900 or $850 with the promo code, but what I was more concerned about was how badly they must have gimped the rest of the laptop, how badly they cheaped out on stuff like the keyboard, the speakers, the screen, and trackpad to get the price that low. Turns out, it's actually a really good laptop, and as an overall package, I think this easily beats out a lot of laptops up into the $1400 range. So the first thing you'll notice is the build quality. It feels like plastic, but the speaker grill is absolutely rock solid. It does not flex. The keyboard has some flex, but it's very minimal, but the screen is quite soft and it bends easily. That and the hinge opens from the middle, so don't open the screen from the corner or else it puts stress on both the screen and the hinge. The hinge tension is excellent, and the one thing I don't like is how sharp the corners are, specifically these edges right here. These are sharp, but the rest of the laptop is fine, just those areas that I mentioned. Now generally, laptops have had downward firing speakers even on a lot of the high-end laptops like the GS65, Aero 15, XPS 15, but these have upward firing speakers positioned above the keyboard and they sound really good. They're loud, clear, detailed, they don't distort. It doesn't have a subwoofer, so bass is lacking, like with pretty much all laptops. But the fact that these are upward firing makes them sound better than most laptops double the price. Keyboard and trackpad are both good. The keyboard is space well, great layout. I like that all of the multimedia keys are in the function row. It's also got a full-size number pad without cramping anything. Key travel is good, and the switches have a tactile response, so you know when you've activated a key. The one thing I don't like is the green backlighting. I think they should have gone with white. The trackpad uses a plastic surface and it's a bit short so scrolling up and down makes my finger go off the trackpad, but it's surprisingly smooth despite being plastic. The buttons feel good and they're weighted nicely, doesn't tire out my fingers after a while. It does use Windows Precision drivers but the tracking is a bit wonky. It's not as accurate as some nicer trackpads, but overall it's quite nice. They're using a 1080p 60Hz screen, and to be honest, for gaming, it's fine, but it's not great. Like, when I dug deeper into the specs, it was quite shocking. Okay, color gamut sucks, color accuracy is quite poor, it's got 250 nits of brightness, which is bordering on dim. It's also a 6-bit panel when 8-bit color is the standard, and this means I can only show about 262,000 colors, down from 16.7 million, which results in color banding, like blocky gradients. It also does not support Windows Hello Facial Unlock or a fingerprint sensor. They do give you the option of a fast 144Hz screen for 100 bucks more or 4K for an extra 150. Probably worth considering since the screen is the weakest part of this laptop. Okay, that was pretty bad, but you get a bunch of ports on this laptop including HDMI, USB 3, Ethernet, a USB-C port, no Thunderbolt 3 here, which is expected, it's a $900 laptop, a full-size SD slot, you got your power, two more USB 3s, and a headphone jack. Getting inside the laptop isn't easy, you need to unlatch the clips at the back and then use the suction cup to pull the rest of the panel off, but once you do, you'll find the two RAM slots, your M.2 slot along with the 2.5 inch drive slot, and the upgradable Intel 9560 Wi-Fi card. The SSD they're using is the SK Hynix BC501. The 128 gig drive has its write speeds gimped, so it's slower at the smaller capacities, but HP doesn't sell this with a 128 gig drive, so it's a non-issue. I just thought I'd mention it. They also have a configurator where you can pick between the quad-core i5-9300H or the six-core 9750H and the GTX 1650 or the 1660 Ti. My unit is running the i5 with a GTX 1650. It can play games, but if you pay like 70 bucks more, you can get the i7 and the 1660 Ti, which will outperform this by quite a margin. Unfortunately, there's no fan control here, and thermals are decent. The CPU sits at the low 90s, and GPU sits at 75 degrees while playing Battlefield 5. And keep in mind, this is the quad-core i5, so the six-core i7 might be a little bit hotter. Just Throwing that out there. There's a 52 watt hour battery inside that's getting me around 6 hours of battery life with light use, screen brightness at max. I'm guessing it's because I'm running the i5 instead of the i7, but it's got really good battery life for a 52 watt hour battery. It comes with a 200 watt charging brick and does not accept power through the 
USB-C port. So, as an overall package, it's really, really good. Like, if you paid the extra 100 bucks for a 144Hz screen, this would be one of the best gaming laptops that you could buy right now for $1,000. It's really impressive how much they got right, especially the speakers and battery life. There's a lot to like about this thing, very little to criticize, and it's priced very well. So if you're looking for a value gaming laptop, definitely look at this one. Okay, that's the end of this video. If you have any laptops that you would like me to check out, you can just post a comment down below. I read them all. I'll see you guys next time.